Yeah. Boom to the hey, all you sports fans out there in the Tubo Sphere, to you, the individual, as part of the collective. Welcome to Fast Track Sports Track Hides here on Talk Radio version of the OMSR. I am your brief, but as always, very concise host, Will, the alternative ESPN Sports Thrill. Always do a little voiceover intro show like this. Let's do a clip order coming up in the last two where four. So, start of week 10, let's get to it. In part one, Boston to Cleveland. They got their own wild thing and pitcher Justin Masterson. Got some nasty pitches on display here. Then Seattle going to New York in an odd Jeter era. Part two, Royals will go up to the Cardinals. Cardinals in an odd kind of a slump, but hey, it was bound to happen. It's all cyclical. That's where a lot of people are enjoying that. And, you know, the Cardinals are not as liked as they think they are days of what? People are kind of tired of them and some of the players. It's not tired, it's not it's nothing personal, you know what I'm saying? And then Minnesota going to Milwaukee. They have part threes and fours, or three and four. Some nice shorts put together. Part three is a 10 cent beer debacle in Cleveland from 40 years ago this month. Part four, some more sports signs on Puig of the Dodgers. These will be that last throw he just made recently. All right, so this is the baseline show if you want to come back and see those other parts. That way I get the other original content covered. No quickie spore right after the highlights, so you'll be later out to here when those are done. All the video highlights courtesy to MLB and ESPN's Baseball Tonight. Everything else, <whistles> to the Omazar. You'd be willing Roll. to pay for a beer at a major league ballpark. Six bucks, eight, ten dollars? How about ten cents? Well, 40 years ago this week, that happened in Cleveland when a promotion went horribly wrong. For more on that, here's Bob Golick. Hey everybody, my name is Bob Bowling. Now, you might know me as a three-time pro bowler who played here in Cleveland, look at the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium. You might know me as Mike Rogers, the RA and Saved by the Bell, the college years. You also might recognize me as this guy's older brother, his muse, his inspiration, the man who taught him everything. Now, I'm here to tell you about three things that I love. Cleveland, sports, and beer. Now, when I was growing up, you know, Cleveland made the national news a couple of times. Once in 1969, the Cuyahoga River caught fire because of pollution. Three years later, our mayor, Ralph Perk, his hair caught fire. Hell, everything was catching fire, except the Indians. They weren't that good. On May 29, 1974, the Indians lost a road game to the Texas Rangers. And that game included a bench-clearing brawl and Arlington fans throwing beer and food at our Indians. Now, after the game, Rangers manager Billy Martin said he didn't worry about retribution in Cleveland because, quote, they don't have enough fans there to worry about. Six days later, June 4th, 1974, there'd be a magical convergence of forces that would draw fans who wanted to stick it to Martin and the Rangers. Ten Cent Beer Night. For one dollar, you could get a ticket and the bleachers for 50 cents and five beers. It was cheaper than the bar. Since you were able to drink at 18, that brought a whole different and a younger crowd to the stadium. Half the fans that were going to be there were there for the beer, not the game. Now, I was only 16 and I couldn't drink, so I go to the game. But we had over 25,000 fans willing to spend pocketfuls of dimes before the first pitch was even thrown. 12 ounces of cheap beer was about to start nine innings of trouble. That was the, the woman who flashed the crowd with her shirt up. And then the guys who ran across the field, a uh, father and son team. And they dropped their drawers and mooned the crowd. A woman had come out to try to kiss Nestor Shylock, the umpire. I remember one guy jumping out of the third base stands with his clothes in his hands. I'll never forget, he tried to get over the fence and, and he had no two black socks. And when he came down, the cop had one sock in his hand and the other sock was on the guy's foot. By the third inning, the bleachers were loaded, literally. And trouble was a brewing at the beer trucks that were brought in for the occasion. They were just clearly understaffed. They had two girls working that. One was collecting the money and one was trying to pour the beers. And it just wasn't working. The tensions were rising and they picked up one of the tables and just threw it right over the truck. And her and the other girl just walked away and left the truck there. We just start filling up our own containers. And some people flip the handle of the tap and just let it flow right into their mouth. By the fifth or sixth inning, there were 
you know, 15 or 20 people jumping out of right field stands and 20 or 30 people jumping out of left field stands and running back and forth in between innings. The first half of the game, frankly, we're having a great time laughing at all those innings, but suddenly it started to get serious. They started throwing cherry bombs into the Rangers' dugout. This has been a night of blatant stupidity. I must have had probably 15 or 20 pounds of hot dogs thrown at me playing first base. The one memorable thing I had thrown at me is a, a, a empty gallon jug of Thunderbird wine. I thought this is uh, this is not all fun and game drunk. The game really was not important. Well, the fans might not have cared, but the team still did. The Indians had come from a 5-1 deficit to tie things up in the bottom of the ninth, but the beer fog had grown too thick. It was a powder keg full of designated drunks about to blow. One inebriated Indian fan lit the match when he came at Rangers outfielder Jeff Burroughs from the bleachers. I just wanted to get his hat. So I ran up behind Jeff Burroughs and I had it in my hand and then I dropped it. And so I went down to pick it up and I looked up and he looked at me and I said, oh hell he kicked me right in the thigh and he stumbled and fell down from the kick and then the fans just really started pouring in billy martin said that he thought that jim bros had been knocked down and so he gets a bat and says boys let's go get him and then uh, the rangers are defending themselves against this mob coming in Had it not been for the Indians players coming out to help us, it had been a real tragedy. One of the Indians players, Tom Hilgendorf, got hit with a piece of a chair. Oh, this is absolute tragedy. I have never seen anything as disgusting as this. I have it With punches thrown, bottles flying, and three bases stolen, umpire Nestor Shylag took a chair to the head, stopped the game, and declared a forfeit for the Rangers. With the 50 security personnel overwhelmed, the Cleveland SWAT team was happy to pinch hit and finish the game their way. We had riot sticks with us. We had to swing them. We had to use force sometimes. I remember the tear gas they threw in there. That got control of the situation. They turned the lights out. Everybody's gone except for 15 teenagers standing on top of the Rangers' dugout, chanting for the Rangers to come out and fight. And so I went up there and asked them, what are you, what are you want, trying to prove? Because the Rangers are gone. So some kid behind another one reaches out and punches me right in the jaw. He didn't even stagger me. He hit like a girl. So all told, there were nine arrests, numerous injuries caused by the melee, and the three bases stolen by the fans never were returned. So what do we learn from this? Well, an organist playing Take Me Out to the Ball Game will not calm an angry mob. People can change. Terry Yerkick, the 19-year-old who grabbed Burroughs' hat, grew up to become Citizen of the Year in Richmond Heights, a suburb 20 minutes outside of Cleveland. And 10 cent beer night is a bad idea. The Indians learned their lesson and swore never again. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is Cleveland, man. They tried it again a month later. I love this town.